Oh, hi, Mr. Lahasky here. And today we're gonna to talk about writing good thesis statements for AP history. Regardless of what type of essay you're writing, your thesis is by far the most important part. It establishes your position for the essay and if it's done well, it provides a roadmap that will keep you on message throughout your paper. Both types of essays that we write in AP history, document-based questions and long essay questions, use rubrics that assign one point to your thesis. And this point should be a slam dunk. If you know your history and follow these steps, you should earn the thesis point every single time. Before we talk about how to write our thesis, let's note some basic requirements. In order to earn the thesis point, you must do three things. Demonstrate a skill, make an argument, and produce a historically defensible claim. First, demonstrate a skill. AP history essays are not reports, and your purpose is not to inform the reader about what happened in the past. Accordingly, simply listing historical facts will not get the job done here. You must apply the information, make connections, and draw valid conclusions. We do this by demonstrating one of the historical thinking skills. Remember, when it comes to writing an AP history, three major historical thinking skills are tested. Comparison, causation, and continuity and change over time. Every essay you write, and therefore every thesis you write, must demonstrate one of these skills. Second, make an argument. In addition to demonstrating a historical thinking skill, your thesis must be argumentative. This means that it is a statement that someone can either agree with or disagree with. If your thesis can be confirmed with a simple two-second Google search, it's not argumentative enough. Third, produce a historically defensible claim. The final requirement to earn the thesis point is that your claim must be historically defensible. This means that it can be supported with specific historical evidence. Whatever you choose to argue in your thesis statement, Make sure that you have specific historical examples in mind that you can offer as proof of your thesis. When you write your actual essay, your body paragraphs will detail this evidence. Okay, so now that we have the theory, how do we put this into practice? It looks a little different for each essay type, so let's break them down. For a comparison essay, you will need to show that two people, groups, places, or events have both similarities and differences with each other. For example, I could say that Sporting Kansas City and the Kansas City Chiefs are similar in that they are professional sports teams that employ some of the best athletes in their respective sports, but they're different in that their players have vastly different skill sets and salaries. Great start, but my thesis is not yet complete. I've demonstrated the skill of comparison, but I have not yet made an argument. Everything I've said can be verified with a simple Google search, and there's really no room to agree or disagree with it so far. So in order to score a thesis point, I need to argue which is more significant, the similarities or the differences. So to finish my thesis, I need to add an evaluative statement like, ultimately, the differences in player lifestyles outweigh the similarities in the athletic nature of their work. This is a statement that could be debated, but also one that I could support with specific evidence. It would therefore earn the thesis point. For a continuity and change over time, or CCOT essay, you will need to show that during a given time period, we can observe things that changed, but also things that stayed the same. For example, over the course of Michael Jackson's life, we saw his occupation as a pop star, his talent as a dancer, and his celebrity status all remain fairly consistent or continuous. On the other hand, his physical characteristics, like his nose and hair, changed dramatically. So now that I've demonstrated the skill, I need to argue which was more significant, the continuities or the changes. For this example, I might add, the continuities in Michael's life, particularly evident in his musical abilities, were more significant than his changes in physical appearance.
Finally, let's talk about causation. Now, in a causation essay, you'll most likely be writing about the causes of a major event. When you're writing a causation essay, College Board wants you to recognize that historical events have multiple causes. Let's consider Justin Bieber's 2014 arrest as our major event. I should be able to recognize that the Biebs' downfall was caused by multiple factors, which probably include money, fame, and drugs. Now, in order to make this argumentative, I need to decide which factor was the main cause and which were the secondary causes. In this instance, I'll say that fame was the main cause, as it gave Biebs access to the money and drugs that led to his poor decision making. You'll notice that in each of these examples, my thesis statement actually consisted of more than one sentence. This is okay. In fact, because of the demanding nature of AP History's thesis requirement, it is often easier to break your thesis up into two or three sentences to make sure you check all the boxes. So, when you move on to write your own thesis, the very first thing you should do when you get the prompt is to decide which essay type or historical thinking skill works best. Sometimes prompts will push you directly towards one of the three skills. Other times the prompt will be more open-ended. In these cases, choose the essay type for which you can make the clearest argument and present the strongest evidence. In order to ensure that you're meeting all requirements, there are a few essential questions that you can ask yourself as you write your thesis. These should be committed to memory, as they are the surest check to make sure you're earning the thesis point. Here they are. For a comparison thesis, ask yourself, what were the similarities, what were the differences, and which was more significant? For a CCOT thesis, what changed, what stayed the same, and which was more significant? And for a causation essay, what was the main cause and what were the secondary causes? If you look at your thesis after writing it and can't clearly see the answers to those questions in your writing, go back to the drawing board. The surest way to earn the point is to answer each of the essential questions in a clear, and complete sentence. And that brings me to my final tip. There are no style points on the thesis, or for that matter, the essay. No bonus point for word choice or complex sentence structure. In fact, if you're attempting to use language or syntax that you can't fully command, it can only hurt your score by distorting your meaning. So be clear, be concise, Make it so that the reader cannot possibly misunderstand what you're saying or arguing. Fluffy, flowery writing is of little use to us here. At the end of the day, we're not even testing how well you can write. We're testing how well you can think. And that's it, folks. Use the thesis writing handout to get a little practice with this and a few more examples, then be ready to put it to use with historical content. Once we get the thesis down, the rest of the essay will fall right into place. See you soon.